mouth, the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Anybody out there have big plans for Thursday? How many of you are going, what's Thursday? <laughs> <laughs> all right, so all of us know what Thursday is. It's, of course, the 4th of July, Independence Day. What's another good word for independence? Freedom. freedom. It's a day that we Americans are supposed to celebrate our freedoms. I have a feeling that for most Americans, every day is Independence Day. We're always talking about our freedoms, always making such a big deal about it. And usually, especially when we feel somebody has sort of squashed our freedoms or is impinging upon them. And of course, if somebody's doing something we don't particularly like, we're going to make sure that their freedoms get impinged as well. Because the reality is, although we have freedoms, we also have parameters around those freedoms, don't we? There are certainly laws that we have to obey. There are constitutional rights that everybody is entitled to. So freedom is not carte blanche to go do whatever we feel like doing whenever we feel like doing it. As a child, what stopped you from doing whatever you wanted to do? Mom and dad. Mom and dad. Anybody out there can still remember the look? <laughs> Everybody's parents probably had the look that you knew. That even though your parents may be trying to get you to spread your wings a little, to try things out, to learn by experience, there was still a line that could not be crossed. And if you were coming perilously close to said line, you probably were going to get the look. My boys will tell you the look was either my eyes got really wide, an eyebrow went up, or if it had gotten too close, pain to the back of the head. They will remind me of that. Though they never called typhus on me. <laughs> I was all saying this. That in that freedom, though, because our parents said, you know, there are lines, there are boundaries, there are parameters, that as much as I want you to be an independent person, I want you to think for yourself and come to conclusions, you do not get to feed every single impulse you might have. Paul brings this, of course, continuing in Galatians that we did last week. Remember that Paul started his church, thought everything was good, leaves, and every time he leaves, some other group comes in and says, Paul's got it all wrong. You need to go a different route. In this case, saying, you need to subscribe to the law, the Torah. You have to go get circumcised. You've got to do all of this stuff before you can become a person that follows Jesus Christ. To which Paul, when he gets wind of this, says, that is nonsense. In freedom, Christ has set you free. You don't have to worry about 600 plus rules to govern your life. You have, in fact, a different set of boundaries. Again, you don't have a permanent get out of jail free card. What you do have is a way of living that helps you before you get too close to that line to not cross it. Thus said, I can bring it, let me summarize all 680 rules for you. Love God, love neighbor self. If you can pull this off, you're doing great. You've got it. And yet, as easy as that sounds, how many of you still find that hard to do? But especially the last part, loving of self. I've said that before when Jesus gives us this. But Paul, he then comes up with this kind of contrast between works of the flesh and fruits of the spirit. I was hoping he had fruits of the flesh and fruits of the spirit, because then I guess that we were comparing apples to oranges. But he doesn't. He says there's works of the flesh. And he has a nice long list. Some of the words actually are the same, basically, and fornication goes with licentiousness and goes with, there's a third word that now is escaping me, but in that list, and then he has Jealousy and envy, sandwiching, quarrels, strife, maliciousness, all these kind of bad behaviors that are often impulsive. And then drunkenness and carousing goes pretty much together. But again, being more about not thinking, just doing whatever I feel like. And then I'll deal with the consequences later. Paul says as Christians, we don't that's not how we should be operating. You don't sit there, I'll do whatever I feel like, and consequences, consequences. It doesn't matter. Paul's like, no, that's incorrect. Our faith in Jesus Christ has, in fact, given us another list. 
not a list of laws of what not to do, but attitudes and behaviors which should guide our choices, that should guide our actions. You know, that's a nicer list, isn't it? Love, patience, joy, kindness. That's not the, living by the Spirit. But living by the Spirit, again, is not freedom to go do whatever you want. Because you have taken the time to say, is this decision I'm about to make? Is it really in accord with what God would want me doing? Does it positively impact the relationships that I value? Or is it just doing it because I'm going to enjoy it so much and I don't really care how it affects anybody else? That's when we're not living by the Spirit, when that's what our brain is telling us. Paul tells the Galatians, again, you, when you accepted Jesus, when you decided to follow him, as the hymn just said, you crucified those impulsive behaviors. That would be great if it were true. I think most of us from time to time still have knee-jerk reactions. Do something that, wow, that just sounds so cool. I'm just going to go do it. And yet there are times when, yeah, maybe it works out occasionally. But more often than not, when that's how we've gone about it, we usually have to face some kind of music. And it's usually not a very nice tune. But by living in the Spirit, Deciding not to be impulsive human beings, though I think impulsiveness would be another good word for sin, isn't it? Something that we do that takes control of our lives and doesn't allow for rational thought. That doesn't allow us to be reasonable people in relationship with others. Paul was all about community and wanting that community to work well. Do you notice that other great phrase in there? If you are going to fight and devour each other, Make sure you are not consumed. You ever been in that kind of an argument or a fight that you know it's going nowhere fast? Like two snakes who decided to bite each other on the tail and each one's eating their way up? To get to a place where it just feels circular. But by God, I'm right. And I'm going to stand so firm here that I can't even hear what you're saying. Because ultimately the only thing that matters is that I win. Again, that seems to me to be getting kind of fleshy, not so much spirit. But he said, be careful, because again, that's a no-win situation for anybody who's decided to get themselves into it. As Christians, we should be looking for ways that build up, that look for more unity, but not necessarily conformity, that always are having asked the question, are we being patient with each other? Are we doing things out of a sense of joy and looking to share the joy that being in relationship with Jesus and walking as God would have us walk? When we can follow that level of the Spirit, good things can occur and perhaps our more fleshy tendencies might not get in our way as much. But in those times when, yeah, the flesh won that battle, it's again the time to say, Hey, I'm sorry, I got that one really wrong. I wish God had given me the look. But hopefully, having now learned from that experience, I'll put that fleshy behavior aside. Amen. Amen.